Hello everybody. I am here to offer you a wonderful opportunity that people have been asking me about wherever I go. People are asking me, how can we see the same move of God in our country as is happening in the Ukraine? Will you come and do a conference? Will you come and preach in our church? And the invitations are just too many. So that's why I've decided to start a Bible school in every country. So right now we have started one in America. We've started one in uh, France. We've started one in Holland. We've started one in Germany. Now it's time for England. So we're starting a history maker Bible school in, Lo in the city of London from September 25th. So I'm inviting everybody that wants to be a part of this great move of God that God is pouring all, all, all over Europe, that you should come and be a part of this Bible school. It's just a weekend Bible school, one weekend a month. So you don't need to leave your job. You don't need to leave your family. You don't need to leave your church. Just one Saturday in a month. You can do that. Please get in touch with us by contacting, by contacting the telephone and the email on the screen after this program. God bless you and welcome to History Makers Bible School. I like the, subject, the title of this conference, When Kings Awaken. When kings awake, we should know the difference in our world. <laughs> So today, the first message I'm preaching at this conference, I want to call it, when kings awaken, they take charge of the earth. That's the, that's, the, that's the title of the message. When kings awaken, they take charge of the earth. Let's open our Bibles to the book of Psalms. Psalm chapter 8. I want us to read from verses 4 to 6. Psalm chapter 8 from verses uh, 4 to 6. It's a scripture that we all know very well. But God will be speaking to us through the scripture today. What is man? Psalm, the psalmist says, what is man that thou art mindful of him? And what is the son of man that thou visits him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels and hast crowned him with glory and honor. That is a very serious thing. God has crowned the man with glory and honor. Then verse 6 says, Thou maketh him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou art put all things under his feet. <laughs> These are very heavy words. <laughs> you see now why I said, when kings awake, they rule, they take charge. This is such a significant topic for this, for this uh, conference. I'm afraid you might not understand the depth of, of this title. It is not just a title. This is a title that is it, that is pregnant with meaning. This is a title that is heavy. This is a title that is loaded. This is a title that needs meditation. When kings awaken, I tell you what, if kings of this land were awake, you will not know New Zealand again. <laughs> When kings awake, it's a dangerous thing to the enemy. When kings awake, ha, 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 you restore the nation and the destructions of ages 
are put back in place. When kings awake, oh God Almighty, may this world bring enlightenment, insight, and understanding to your people. Cause understanding and the anointing of God to open not just the ears, but the minds of your people to understand what you're trying to tell us today. That we might awake to the place that you want us to be. And according to that scripture we're, we're reading, Psalm chapter 8, when kings awake, the first thing they will realize is that I am no more an ordinary man. Let me illustrate that to you. What is your name, my sister? Lorna Bates. Lorna Bates? Tony Wano. Lorna Tony, right? Now, youth, you are a young lady. You are a young woman. You are a young lady. That is what you would normally, ordinarily think about yourself. But if the purpose of this conference were to be fulfilled, something would have happened to you. Your eyes would have been opened. And then you will cease to see yourself as Tony and as Nonny. You will begin to see yourself as a superhuman. Yes. Yes. You will cease to see yourself as a new, just another New Zealander that the government might not even be aware is here. Just a number in the statistics of the country. We are four million, just a number. But when the understanding and the awakening of the kings come upon you, when you wake up to the realization of who you truly are and of your position as a king, it is a dangerous place to be. You cease to care about the mundane things of life. The things that other people care about is no more your concern. When you wake up to your mandate as a king in this kingdom, you only begin to care about how to manage the earth for God. Friends, when kings awake, you, be, you, be, you begin to see yourself as the manager of God on the earth. You begin to realize beyond any reasonable doubt that you are here to rule and to reign for him. You begin to take charge by force as Pastor Peter after us. You begin to see that this kingdom it's not just taken by force. You begin to know that you are the one to do it. And then you begin to stop to talk about the gay people taking over New Zealand. You begin to talk about it. You begin to advance into God. And into your position of authority. And you begin to advance into God to extract from him the knowledge and the revelation that it takes to stop it. Yes. To stop your country being run over by gay people. To stop your country being run over by the liberals. You begin to know I am the one in charge. They are not the ones in charge. I am the one in charge. Yes. And you begin to advance to stop the progression of evil. Amen. Who can do that? Only the king that has been awakened. Yeah. Not the sleeping king. And not the sleeping giant. So it's a dangerous thing for the king to awake. It is a violent thing. I mean... So that's why I'm saying this is not just another topic of the conference. If you if you just seen it as a as a topic of the conference, 
Wow, wow, wow. That is our problem in Christianity. Because we just come up with something fancy and people are used to it. My, let God be speaking to us. And this topic, I think, it is the voice of God to us. It is the art cry and the desire in the heart of the Father. How I wish my kings were awake. How I wish my kings were awake. How I wish my kings were awake. How I wish my kings in New Zealand were awake. How I wish my kings were awake. How I wish my kings were awake. Kings were awake. That's the cry in the heart of the Father. Because when the kings awake, people will be wondering, I thought it was a man. That is what David thought. So he was saying, ah, what's happening, God? I thought I am a man. And I thought we are just ordinary people. And he began to wonder, ah, am I not just an ordinary man? Who is a man? What is a man? That you will be so mindful of him? No. Is it not just a man we're talking about? When king shall we? It is no more the ordinary understanding of a man. You begin to wonder, ah, is he not a man? How can a man be so prominent? How can a man be so significant? How can a man be so powerful? How can a man be so effective? How can a man operate like this? How can it be? Is he not a man? That's what David was experiencing here. And he was saying, ah, is it not a man? How could you be so mindful of him? I mean, is that not an ordinary son of man? Is he not born of a woman? If he's an ordinary man, how could God be so much manifested through him? Is he not an ordinary man? How could he reveal God so much, all right? Is he not an ordinary man? How could he carry God so heavily? Is he not an ordinary man? How could God so much operate through him? Is he not an ordinary man? How could we see his words coming to pass like the words of a God? How is he not a son of a man? How could he be so effective? How could he speak and it's as if he's God himself is speaking? How can, is he not an ordinary man that is born of a woman? Why is it that when he talks, things happen? Whereas when millions of other people talk, millions of other men talk, nothing happens. What is this? Is this not a man? But it is the kind of thing that happens to a man that is awakened. That is awakened to his place in God. That is awakening to his position, to his authority, and to his mandate. So he's asking the question, what is man that thou art mindful of him? And the son of man, that you will visit him so much. <laughs> you make him look supernatural. It's like it's on the same level like the angels. How could you make him to be so superhuman? That's what I said. <laughs> that when kings awake, you cease to see yourself at Tony or Noni. You are not an ordinary man again. It's a dangerous place to be. No more ordinary man. That's why it began to compare him to the angels. You have made him a little bit lower than the angels. And in some other translations, it means you, it, as you have made him above the angels. But which means he's no more ordinary. When sons and children of God are awake, that's what you begin to say. They become superhuman, supernatural in their dimensions. When they act, when they speak, they are they say dimension in it that you don't see when ordinary men operate or speak when they begin to act 
there is an efficiency, effectiveness in it because the God of heaven is backing every of their action. Because the God of heaven is backing every of their word. Because the God of heaven is sending his angels ahead of them. And because everything they say, God and the resources of heaven is backing up to accomplish it. So you could live on the earth and look and live supernaturally human or supernatural life when you awake to who you are as the king in this kingdom. He said, thou hast crowned him with glory and honor. The next thing, the first thing when kings awake, you, do, you, you cease to be ordinary. You cease to be ordinary. You cease to be ordinary. You cease to be ordinary, man. The second thing, when kings are away, you are aware. All right? You are aware to a level that cannot be explained with words that you have been crowned with the dignity and the honor of the Almighty God. You are aware that he said he has been crowned with glory and honor. You know, when you are awake, you are awake to some realization in God. You begin to realize some authority. You begin to realize some, your position. You begin to be aware of your possibilities in God so much that you can no more be ordinary. You can no more operate ordinarily. You begin to deliver supernatural results. And really, all of us, every man, especially in God, in Christ, we have all been crowned with glory and honor. But we don't look like it on a, on a normal basis. We don't even realize it most of the time. We all know it's written somewhere in the, in the Bible, but we don't really believe it. We don't believe it. Talk like a walking in it. But the man that is awakened by the Spirit of God, a man that has been touched by the mind of God. A man that has, that in whose eyes have been opened to see who he truly is in Christ Jesus. A man that has been awakened to his position, his true position in God, begins to behold that glory upon his head. A man that, uh, the, whose eyes have been opened begins to see the honor of God over his head. And that glory and honor that he begins to see over himself begins to make him do some crazy things, take some crazy steps that are not ordinary. Are you listening to me now? Because he is now aware. It's just like when you are blind. When you are blind, you don't see you, you are careful the way you walk. You know, you are careful. You are groping. But when your eyes see, you are confident. <laughs> you know, you don't need to pro, pro, grow up or anything. You are, you are walking. You know what? You are avoiding things and you're going directly. That's what happens to the spirit as well. That is why. Because they see how to operate in the spiritual realm, that's why they reign on the earth. Because you cannot reign if you don't know how to do it. And people who reign are people, you cannot govern in politically if you, do, if you don't know how to govern. That's why they, they remove you the next day. You cannot become a millionaire if you don't know how to do it. But what I'm saying is, when you become, when you, when you are awak awakening the spirit, and you begin to see your position of honor and glory. It's like your eyes just pop open. You know how to bring solution to every problem that is the problem of the society. You know, when, when I go to America, I tell the Americans, I said, I'm so ashamed the way the church is in this country. This is no bragging, no bragging, with all humility. If I live in America, if God makes me to live in America and to, you know, to minister in America, I alone, just by myself, I know what to do 
to stop every debate about gay marriage or about prayer in school, I know what to do. Now, when I talk like that, people think it's crazy. This is just too much. That's what happens to you when you are awake. <laughs> it's true. No bragging. Because I've done it in my own country of 50 million people. Every argument stops when the king that is awakening comes on stage. Because it's just like a blind man that sees you know exactly what to do. You know what to do to stop it. You will see your honor and you will walk in it. You will see your glory and you will walk in it. So this is a dangerous tie to topic. This is, a, this is a serious responsibility right here. When kings are away. And this is just the beginning. This is just the first message. Now, you will not just walk in glory and honor. When kings awake, he says, he will begin to see his own dominion. Thou hast made him to have dominion over the works of his hand. You know, when the kings awake, now the king will begin to realize that it is I, it is I that God has appointed to rule over all the works of God's hand. And what is it that is not the work of God's hand on the earth? On this earth? Nothing. That is, I am the one that God has anointed and appointed to manage the earth for God. Now, <laughs> okay, you know, the Bible says that he has made us to rule over, to have dominion over all the works of his hand. Now, is that true or false? It's true. Now, if it's true, why are you not doing it? See, that's the difference between a king that is awake and a king that is still sleeping. You mentally know it is true, but you're not operating in it. That's why in my country, in Ukraine, I'm not just a pastor. I don't see. It is a... It is derogatory or whatever, derogatory or what is the word? It is, it is derogatory to just look, see myself as a pastor. <laughs> it is humiliating. It is reproaching. Because that is not true. If I am a pastor, I know my functions go beyond the pulpit. So as a pastor, I see myself as a king for God, which is true. Also, I see myself as a manager of this portion of the earth where God has placed me as a pastor. As a manager of the earth means every scope and area of the earth. If I am his representative, just think about it, if I represent him, if I'm his ambassador, if I'm speaking on his behalf, then wait a minute, I must have the access to speak to every sphere yes. of the earth where he has placed me. I am not just a pastor over the pulpit. I am a pastor over some piece of land, over some areas of life. I am a pastor over a nation or a city. If that is true, why should anybody or by myself put myself just in some building and limit my influence? So in the Ukraine, I don't see myself as a pastor. No. I see myself <laughs> as God's representative that is in charge, that is to manage the earth, that nation. The whole nation. I see myself as a manager for God over the whole affair of the country. I see myself as God's ambassador over the land. That I, I, I see myself as somebody who is spiritually taking charge and bringing God's opinion, God's values to this fear of the earth, regaining it back to the influence of the Almighty God. So that's why in the Ukraine where I live, 
<laughs> I'm not just going to say, uh, there is nobody that will say we are not there. Everybody, it's, we are a household name. So I have a say, and I influence, not just have a say, the politics of our country, of our city. In the city that I live in, 20% of the parliament of that city, is there are, are, are people that uh, are from the political party we started from our church. 20% of the city's parliament. The mayor of a 4 million city, the capital of this country, is a member of our church. 4 million, just as big as your own country here. Why? Because there is a pastor. I mean, I didn't say these people got saved. No, they were just members of our church that we groomed, raised up to, to open, whose eyes became open, who were raised up as kings to go into those places and claim the dominion of God. Yeah. And bring the representation of God back to the place, every sphere of the side. Hello everybody, I'm here to offer you a wonderful opportunity that people have been asking me about wherever I go. People are asking me, how can we see the same move of God in our country as is happening in the Ukraine? Will you come and do a conference? Will you come and preach in our church? And the invitations are just too many. So that's why I've decided to start a Bible school in every country. So right now we have started one in America, we've started one in uh, France, we've started one in Holland, we've started one in Germany. Now it's time for England. So we're starting a history maker Bible school in, in the city of London from September 25th. So I'm inviting everybody that wants to be a part of this great move of God that God is pouring all, all, all over Europe that you should come and be a part of this Bible school. It's just a weekend Bible school, one weekend a month. So you don't need to leave your job, you don't need to leave your family, you don't need to leave your church, just one Saturday in a month. You can do that. Please get in touch with us by contacting, by contacting the telephone and the email on the screen after this program. God bless you and welcome to History Makers. Bible school.